Jones. Welcome back to a most excellent Retro Wednesday here at the Tidarium Hangar. This is Mike, and today I'm going to talk to you about the 1991 Kenner Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. This is the entire toy line, and then some. We're going to go into all of it, and we're going to discuss every figure and the playset phone booth. Is it a phone booth? Is it a TARDIS? But we're also going to get into something that I haven't seen anybody else on YouTube do, and that is show how this speaker works. Yeah, I'm going to show how this works, and uh, everybody shows it kind of discusses it, but it doesn't work like I thought it did. So we're going to get into looking at that and more on a fun, most excellent Retro Wednesday, promise no bogus, coming up. The toy line was based on the movie, as you can see, even with the card bags, the packaging you see is the movie and the very first Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure movie. There's also one character from the second movie, which is the Grim Reaper. And then there was also a cartoon, which I don't really have anything. I've never watched a whole episode, so I don't know anything about the cartoon. But we're going to get into this. I do think that the premise of the Bill and Ted Excellent Adventure movie was just a goofy, silly premise that they had to go back in time to get all these historical figure figures for their report that was due and a lot of funny things like everyone else that gave their report there was one person giving it but these guys both gave the same report as a group project evidently they're the only ones that did a group project so weird fun it's sometimes it's fun to just turn your brain off for a little bit right we're gonna start out talking about bill and ted but what do they look like compared to other Kenner stuff that was coming out at, at the time? We've got the real Ghostbuster, which about the same height, maybe slightly taller. He is one of the taller Ghostbusters. And then they've got their Police Academy. I think that this toy line is closer to Police Academy for the functions, features kind of thing, the way that works. And it's based on a movie. And it's really goofy. This, although it's based on the cartoon is a little bit more serious but yeah just kind of a little bit of comparison right there so you can see how tall they are all right so first of all this is ted theodore logan we'll get into the wild stallions jam session two pack that they are dressed differently but uh here is the packaging and it's just how it looks in the packaging and i'm gonna first start off by saying that i was gonna collect these in 2020 i the movie that came out in 2020 was Face the Music, so Bill and Ted Face the Music, and I think that caused a massive resurgence in these, and people were wanting $100 a figure back then, and I didn't want to pay that. Now in 2023, things have settled down, people forgot all about this toy line, and so I was able to pick it up for really cheap, so anyhow, uh, here is this figure. Now they do a couple of things. First of all, when you squeeze the leg, boom, his head turns to the side. And I'll show here in just a second why when we get into the next figure. And then in the back, there's a hole. They all have this hole. It's a plug for the speaker, and I'll show that. And it's kind of a cool idea. It's it's interesting what they did. And then his hand is supposed to hold his guitar. They come with a cheap guitar, and that's all he comes with, really. I mean, literally, you can see right there. This comes with a guitar, a green strap, and it re feels really cheap. Feels like you could break it very easy. He doesn't really hold it that well. It just rests in place. So if you don't have the strap... Good luck having him hold it. You might want to tape it on or put a rubber band around his hand or something. I don't know. But he, he looks kind of weird with his yellow shorts and his vest. And they do tampograph the Wild Stallions on. I think every figure has a tampograph on there. He also has some writing on his pants. I think it says save the, save the humans. Save the humans. I, I can't get that on the screen. Anyway, there's not much to the figure. But let's go ahead and bring in his buddy. Here's Bill S. Preston, Esquire, who has a, an orange guitar, and it looks more like kind of a rocking guitar. This looks more of a standard classic guitar. This is more, more like a rocking rocker guitar. And then there's his hole in the back and got an orange around that. He's just got blue pants and a shirt. So, while well, Stallion's ta Tampa graphed on there. So, just looking at this toy line, it's like, wow, this is not that exciting of a toy line. When you look at all these other things like G.I. Joe and... Well, heck, even Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and at this point in time, you had some other stuff going on. 
I think Aliens was out at this time. But here's what they do. When you squeeze the legs together, they jam, their heads turn, and they look at each other. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're supposed to look like they're looking at each other and jamming and having a good time. That's what that's all about, which uh, that's not a feature I would have enjoyed as a kid. In 1991, if I was, uh, I might have still been collecting Joe and Transformers and stuff, but it never even caught my attention. Actually, in 91, I didn't know they made these, but uh, it's still pretty cool, pretty interesting. But it's much more fun when we get to the speaker with these guys. But let's get into the, what I think are the coolest figures in the toy line, and that's like all of these other figures. All right, so next up we have the Grim Reaper, and he looks pretty cool. It's a good looking figure. Let's toss in the jam session background there so it's a little bit easier to see them. And yeah, you did, You only comes with one figure with two accessories. But now that prices have come way down on these, it was easy to get a cheap extra figure to have hold the other accessory. And it's a lot of fun. And Grim Reaper, death is coming for us all, sadly. But there he is. It's a cool figure. It's interesting. And when everybody talks about this toy line, this is actually most people's favorite. And it can be used in different other ones. Now, this thing is hard to hold, and I could barely get it to display like that. His sigh. But he does do this. And so really wasn't going to... His action feature is not going to do much good with this thing. And it turns his head to the left. So he's going to be looking that direction. He does have wild stallions on his head. So it's it's a cool figure. It's a cool toy. Uh, underneath all of this, he's got a red vest. It looks like he's got like a little necklace or something going on in there. And then his pants are shredded off. You just see his bones. And it's just such an interesting, weird, odd, wacky, wackadoodle figure. And he has that port to do all that kind of stuff with. Over here, here's his guitar. And it looks like it's a skull, a skull-shaped guitar. Kind of cool stuff going on overall with this figure. I like it. I think it's a cool figure. You could put it with your Skeleton Warriors. You could put it with uh, He-Man, Skeletor, uh, one of Skeletor's relatives or something. Good old Uncle Death, Uncle Grim Reaper. Getting that to line back up is going to be a pain. But yeah, there it goes. Grim Reaper. Cool figure. I don't know. I'm still trying to decide which is my favorite of these, but he's a th one of the ones at the top of my list. Thanks for getting into Billy the Kid and this one here. Plays music. He's got the wild stallions all over his pants. He does come with chaps. And uh, we'll see that in the carded figure. And he comes with this uh, orange guitar. And it's a different guitar. I don't think they reuse any of the guitars. Except for maybe the jam session ones. Are just recolors of their original. No, those are different too. So the, all different guitars. Which is, I, I, I guess that's a plus for the toy line. That they all have their own original guitar. You pull his legs and... He can jam. That's what happens. His head does not want to turn too much, but I think it turns to the left. And it's a pretty nice head sculpt. The head, the the hat is not removable, so you don't have to worry about losing it. There's some other ones that you might lose there. Hats too. Now, this is sort of the casual look, and I guess that really does happen in the movie. But uh, here he is with his chaps on he's he's being this is when they pick him up he's got his chaps on and all that kind of stuff and then he's got this lasso which i don't know exactly how it works but i'm pretty sure because his arm moves around if you put the lasso in there it's going to move around and that's going to be a whole lot of fun still pretty cool figure this is the most expensive figure out there and there's pretty much the whole toy line i don't have them all carded but pretty much whole toy line. in it this case it's actually cheaper to buy this guy carded to get him complete rather than to try to find a loose complete one and piece them together because that's that's just the way it is with some of these toy lines. Some of these Kenner toys, it is cheaper just to buy a complete one sealed in the package rather than trying to chase it down loose. But uh, I'm okay with having a nice representation loose and then to have this one on the card back. But pretty expensive. I think I paid like 50 or 60 for this guy. Uh, most expensive of all of them. Billy the Kid. Next up, we got Genghis Khan on the drum set. Having lots of fun. He also has this removable vest, which I am not going to remove the vest, but it's pretty cool. He comes with a molded in head, something on his head there. 
in his hat. Comes with two of these drumsticks. Uh, this drumstick here is the one that's almost always missing from loose ones. Again, if you want a complete one, you probably have to get them carded. This day and age, this is what he does. He's a drummer, and he drums. And he goes wild and crazy. Now, his head turns with it. So this this whole drumming, well, it's, it's like they did the superpowers thing. Then they added the head twist to it. So they really did more to this or with this than even their superpowers. There's his hole in the back for his speaker. And when we get to showing you what it does for drum-wise, uh, drummer's drum. And guitar's guitar. Let's see him in his card back. Here he is with this card back. And nice of them to do this for me. So now you can see what he looks like with that thing off. I do not want to try to get that vest off. That's what he looks like with the vest off of him. And he does have a little bio. And yeah, fun stuff right here. Genghis Khan, another really cool figure. I, I don't even know if they've made any other toy line has ever made another Genghis Khan. If so, let me know in the comments below. Next up, we have Rufus, which is an excellent likeness of, was it George Carlin? Is that who played it? And he's got this weird kind of keyboard that's strapped to him like that. And uh, yeah, I was wondering if the bottom, they, they did set it up different. You cannot connect it to Abe Lincoln's stand, but here he goes and he jams out. And really, that's a good jamming out look. Like he looks like he is jamming. His head's moving, he's having fun, he's playing the electric keyboard. Although, is he really inclined to? He's got some cool looking teal green shoes that matches his teal green shirt. And uh, does it, does he say Wild Stallion's on him anywhere? I don't see Wild Stallion's on him anywhere other than on his keyboard. So that's what his keyboard looks like. It's pretty cool, pretty cool figure. A little. This one's a little harder to get than some of the other ones. Uh, but not as expensive Billy's a kid, so he's cheaper than that one. Here's his suitcase he comes with. Here's separated the keyboard and his chest strap. And yeah, pretty cool figure. Good old Rufus. Here's his bio, if you want to read it. But he's definitely a key character. Yep, there we go. That's Rufus. Pretty cool. Pretty cool figure. Well, let's go on. Seven minutes ago, Mike put my hat on okay this is abe lincoln needs no introduction it is abe lincoln and that's a really cool looking abe lincoln the actor that played him was uh tall and thin and uh, i just recently watched the movie pretty good movie i guess it reminds you of back in the day there's a nice orange hole that goes into him so yeah how many abe lincoln figures are out there probably more than i know but Probably not as many as there should be. But, yeah, as he, he does the same thing. So all of these kind of keyboard people and drumming people do the same stuff. There's kind of uh, in their own little department there. Now, this comes with a keyboard and a stand. And I have another one of these. I thought it was a fence for something. So I don't know where I put it. But I thought it was a fence piece that goes to something. Anyway... Uh, it's it, the keyboard itself looks like this, which kind of looks like the other keyboards in a way, except bigger. And he plays it. That's what goes on with this guy. And there he is in the packaging. Let's turn him around. Let's get a look at his bio. In addition to being our 16th president, he's also a bodacious keyboarder. But there he is, Abe Lincoln. Pretty cool to have an Abe Lincoln figure. Oh, real quick, his hat does pop off. And it says Wild Stallions on his uh, Kid and Play kind of hairdo. Was it Play that's got that or Kid? Now we got Bill and Ted in their Wild Stallions Jam Session 2 pack where they're wearing their tuxedo top and their shorts. And they're both wearing different color orange shorts. Uh, yeah, it's uh, wacky and goofy. They just had to come up with another reason to get these. Here's the thing, whenever you have a, a toy line, every kid wants Bill and Ted, I'm sure. The rest of them were probably hit and miss, like I don't really care about, the kids didn't care about this one or that one. That's probably how it went back in the day. I don't know. But the jam session, 
So they do the same things. They jam and... Come on. And they look. Okay. They're both looking to the right. So they don't look at each other anymore. He's not looking to... No, they're both looking to the left. And not looking at each other. Anyway. Doesn't really matter. Their guitars look different than their other guitars. They don't hold them very well. They have different color uh, straps. To just kind of what Kenner did back in the day. Just kind of mix it up. Different colors. Um, are they the same shorts? Nope. Everything's different. They're like completely different figures. So they went out of their way to make completely different figures. But I have them in the box. And so let's get this box here sealed in the box. So it's not going to do you any good for this cassette player thing they got going on here the speaker but there they are in the package it's kind of cool kind of fun this was i think the last thing they made and it was supposed to be an exclusive or something but there's plenty of them out there on the market and what, what i want to show is that the unreleased boom truck with portable sound stage that never came out there was another vehicle that never came out that does look kind of cool though seeing that and then over here napoleon he made it to the package so he was far enough along that he's on the actual package and he was going to be a drummer and he looks like he literally is just knocking off the drum set but from uh genghis khan but cool would have been nice to have had him you know if if all these third-party companies that come out and they make stuff they need to be making stuff that we don't have they're making this with NECA and a few other things, but what they need to do is make these unproduced items for collectors out there, and they're not doing it uh, all the way. NECA did do it with Dungeons & Dragons with the unreleased Lost Wave. They should do that with this if they've got, as long as they still have the license, or whoever has the license needs to make Napoleon. Now we got a phone booth playset. It's the phone booth playset. Yes, it is. Here it is in all of its glory, and uh, well, let me let me say something about this. Is this a phone booth, or is this the TARDIS? If it's a standard phone booth, then I open this door here, and I'm gonna find Superman. So let me open the door and find see if Superman is inside there. Oh, it's just a generic, boring businessman. It's not Superman, huh? Generic, boring businessman that swings his arms. From Kenner, sold separately. So this thing actually has two features. You could say three, as swivel door is a feature. Uh, it, it actually, that's how phone booths worked. <laughs> Guys, this is what you call a phone booth. You put quarters into this telephone, and it, it actually is a pretty good looking phone. You can pull this out. As you pull this out, if you look up here, Hard to get all this on frame. It's such a big playset, it's hard to get in frame. That spins as you turn this. Now, the, the theory on this is, is that you're gonna sort of wind this around a figure, and then you're gonna snatch that figure up by pushing this button. And it also spins that. Uh, I don't know how good of a feature that is. Now, if you want the phone to look like it's sitting on the phone pay phone you got to pull it out a bit and then you can set it on there and i think it was designed for people with smaller hands than me i don't know kids did kids play with toys back in 1991 or was it just a collector market like today okay here we go that you can sit on there then there's like uh see glass in the back then it's wide open on the sides wide open in the door there's red decal stickers all the way around it so pretty cool and then one more thing is you could, if you wanted to, and I'm not going to load them all up, but you could do what they did in that one episode and just pile them in there. That's the way you could display it as a place that just all of them piled in there. It's not how I'm going to display mine. I'll show you how I display mine here in a bit too. But there it is, the phone booth. Quickly, here's the box showing Abe and all them jumping into it. It's all and, and, and kind of just picture, drawing. And there's the real product on the side. Yeah, phone booth, it's not the greatest thing out there, but it's you have to have it to have a complete set, and it's kind of fun to have with your figures. Now for the speaker and bundle of wires. This does come with the Wild Stallions jam session, so we could actually 
put this in here so you can kind of see what they got going on. And I'm I'm actually going to use standard figures with it, not the well, jam session uh, redo figures. But you're going to need something else. You're going to need like a, a Sony Walkman. Those of you uh, <laughs> from, uh, it's a quaint little piece from the 21st century. And uh, here we go. 20th century? 21st century. Here we go. So it's, come, there's the cassette, Wild Stallions, and there it goes. And this works. So you've got wires coming out the side and one wire up top. So the one wire up top is going to plug into your headphones. And to my surprise, I thought it would just start playing music. And I played it. Nothing. Nothing. So I was like, okay, well, let's plug this in. So we're going to get one into Ted and one into Bill. So it's a two channel kind of deal and it completes a circuit for each channel. And they play different music. That's what it does. That's pretty much all it does. And it doesn't matter. And people are saying you have to have a drummer for drumming and all this stuff. I'm going to flip it over. And I think it's at the right exact spot that when I flip it over, it goes to drumming. So any figure can be the drummer. Any figure can play the drumming music if they wanted to. So you can put Genghis Khan over here. And then the other channel's got guitar. So one's got a guitar. One could be Genghis Khan on the drums. Or it could be Rufus playing keyboard or whatever. And that's how that works. Now, let's say you have a different set. Now, I got this Spiral Zone cassette. I can put it into here. And we can see what does it do if you have a cassette that's not made for it. And you're going to find that... So this is kind of like those cassette tapes that you had some He-Man records and all that kind of stuff, but they included this with Spiral Zone. These are the only cassettes I have, but it's quite interesting that it all works together and I can, I can hear this. I actually haven't played cassettes in so long and you probably haven't either. All right, so this is my look at the entire Bill and Ted Excellent Adventure toy line from Kenner 1991. And it's kind of a blast of the past from many years ago, decades ago now. 90s is so vintage. It blows my mind that 90s is vintage, but my 90s is vintage. And it's kind of cool. It was a fun ride. The movie's fun. Small toy line. There's only, what, nine figures or something like that? Two, four, six, eight, nine figures. And the TARDIS and the... Uh, if you get two of the figures, you get the speaker. Kind of a fun little gimmick kenner was big on gimmicks making their toys fun which they did but let me know what you think about this toy line did you have this back in the day did you pass on this did you like the movie did you hate the movie did you like the cartoon did you hate the cartoon did you even know they made a cartoon but like subscribe and titarium hanger out Me and Bill. He also said that if you fail history, you flunk out of school. Bad. You're destined to flunk most egregiously. Sucked under. Buddy, get together. Remember who your buddy is. So crates, watch out for your robe, dude. Come on. What are they doing? Yeah. Look at this sandal. <laughs>